From the News Channel 5 Network, this is On The Line. Welcome to Open Line. I am Ben Hall. Thank you for joining us on Wednesday night. We are talking about Tennessee gun laws, and a lot has happened uh, just in the last few weeks that will impact what lawmakers talk about next legislative session as it pertains to gun laws. Happy to have with us our expert on this uh, with Tennessee Firearms Association, John Harris. John, thank you for coming back. Glad to be here. So there was even, legislature's not in session, but you were saying there's major news yesterday on the gun law front. Oh yeah, yeah. Yesterday there were about two and a half hours worth of hearings in the Tennessee Senate, primarily focused on what um, what we're going to do about the military, and it's it's a very peculiar, I think, approach that the administration is taking with the military because under our statutes right now, Governor Haslam, back in July when the shooting happened in Chattanooga, he had as commander in chief under our Constitution the authority to order at that point in time that the members of the military while on post like at the you know training centers or whatnot that they could be armed he could have ordered that immediately instead what we found out with the announcements in the hearings that took place yesterday is that the the governor and his uh, uh, general Haston that's in charge of the Tennessee military have dreamed up this plan where the soldiers are going to be armed but it's not as if they're being armed as soldiers. They're going to be receiving a waiver so that as citizens, if they have handgun carry permits, they'll be allowed to carry on their post only certain kinds of guns and only in certain fashions. And it's only going to apply to the soldiers that are old enough to get a permit. So the, all of the soldiers that are between 18 and 21 are still you know, gun free. They would not have a gun. So yeah. when I said at the top of the show that a lot has happened since you were last on, we had the shooting in Chattanooga. Right. Um, the tragedy there. And then we also had what happened here in Nashville. The movie theater. The movie theater incident um, in Antioch. And, and so that is influencing what lawmakers are certainly thinking about. And there was a huge call after the Chattanooga shooting for military people here to be armed. Is that right? I mean, That's let's, correct. Let's kind of go through that. So after Chattanooga, what happened and where do we stand? Immediately after Chattanooga, governors in other states, about six other states, within just a few days, issued orders that the, the military forces in their states uh, that are under his, the governor's control would be uh, armed on post. They were immediately put in place. Haslam announced that in Tennessee, uh, they would be, re re you know, they would be reviewing it, and so literally, we have been from July, the, what the 16th is when the Chattanooga shooting was, I think, to yesterday, almost a month, getting a plan in place from our administration on how our soldiers, people who are supposed to be armed are going to be allowed to carry privately owned weapons for their own defense. What was the thinking in not having them armed before? And was that, that was nationwide? Well, there was an order that came down uh, during the Clinton administration about military bases like Fort Hood, Fort Campbell. Uh, in Tennessee, it's important to understand that the Tennessee State Guard, which you hear very little about, and then the Tennessee National Guard, which is what you hear most about, are both literally part of Tennessee state government. And they're under the complete control of the governor, unless the National Guard is activated by the president. So the governor, Haslam, had the authority, just like the other governors did, to immediately order that uh, our soldiers in Tennessee would be allowed to, or would be issued arms at their post. So if they were at a recruiting station or wherever they were, you know, they, they would be able to be armed. But prior to that, it was just commonplace or it was it was actually stated that was not appropriate? It no, was just there's commonplace actual, they weren't. There's an actual order out, as I understand it, that dates back at least about 2001 where they were prohibited from not only having their personal weapons, but they were not issued on base uh, military provided weapons. So like a, a, on base and at a recruiting station, right. they're completely unarmed. Then you have the situation in Chattanooga where it appears they were targeted simply because of the fact they were military, they were unarmed, unable to defend themselves, 
and there's this call, okay, let's let's give them the the ability to fit, defend themselves, right? Correct. That call went out, you know, in multiple states, and, and like I said, Tennessee waited almost a month to do anything about it. Other and states acted immediately, and you got to sort of wonder why it took us so long to go, hey, wait a minute, these are soldiers, let's give them guns. So you <laughs> sound frustrated. <laughs> uh, Tennessee I'm Firearms Association, yeah. you've been frustrated with some of the progress of gun laws. There's some who would say Tennessee is very open when it comes to guns. We, we, we've, we've, been, we've moved along pretty well. Some would. Um, you maybe don't always share that opinion. No, I, I certainly don't. I, I think we're behind the curve. Like we've talked before, uh, you know, we've got 50 states, eight of them now, require no permits to carry guns openly or concealed anywhere in the state. 30 states require no permits at all for civilians to carry guns openly. So if, you're, if they're visible, you can carry them in 30 states. That includes every state that touches Tennessee, but Georgia allows open carry of firearms. No permits, no training. Are we going to have that? What do you think? I mean, is well, that going to happen here? That bill has run twice in Tennessee in the last two years. Senator Beavers had it in the Senate, and, and uh, Representative Van Huss had it in the House. Senator Beavers passed it in the Senate in, uh, two years ago on a vote of, uh, well, last year, on, last year on a vote of, I think, like 27 to 2 on the Senate floor. It had overwhelming support, even Democrat votes. And then a, a subcommittee uh, playing shenanigans with the administration in a false fiscal note killed it at the last minute at the end of session. And then it was reintroduced this year and the same type of thing happened. A different subcommittee killed it on a 2 to 2 to 2 vote. So that's called, is that called constitutional carry? Is that what you that's a, call that's a that? a form of constitutional carry. Constitutional but it does carry. away with, with permits. It does. You it, don't need a permit. You would not there, need a that permit. That makes some people very uncomfortable, as we've talked about. It does. It does. And, and I understand, but I think most of the time when you're uncomfortable with it, you don't realize that 60% of the states already allow it, and it's not a problem in those states. Now, when you look at the the gun violence that we've seen since you know you've been on last month Chattanooga the movie theater right. that's a bit of an unusual situation but it's certainly what that certainly points to is just how on edge everyone is very much so you know I, I have had conversations with legislators uh, in Tennessee regularly since last you know when the Chattanooga shootings happened they're talking about at least the ones that I'm talking with getting rid of all gun-free zones in the state so that we no longer have these uh, facilities where people are unarmed uh, if they want to and are legally able to carry a gun. Uh, they're talking about... Now, all right, let's talk about that. So gun-free <laughs> zone, that a movie theater, is, is a gun-free zone, can that be designated by the company? So yes. the movie theater can say, you know what, we don't we don't want guns here, so we're a gun-free zone. Correct. So this would override the authority, the ability of a business to say, you know what, you can't bring a gun in. Is that true? The, the type of gun-free zone legislation that I think that legislators are gravitating toward, there, there are a couple of locations like parks, schools, you know, that are that are off limits by statute. And what they're talking about is getting rid of the ones that are off limits by statute. And then when it comes to private property like a movie theater, what they're talking about doing is, is sort of changing the balance in that situation so that a movie theater or a private property owner would still be allowed to post, but they would be liable for having adequate security to protect their customers, where that's not required now. So in a shooting like what we had at the movie theater, if they had posted under the kind of law that they're talking about passing, uh, if there was not adequate security or metal detectors or whatever you want to call it there to protect the people from a threat, then there would be civil liability placed upon that movie theater or the property owner. And then how do you define adequate security? You have oh. one guy there with a, you know, one, one security guard there? There are, uh, I can tell you this, there are plenty of experts and those kind of cases have been around for years and those get litigated in front of juries and juries decide whether or not the, the property owner took reasonable steps to protect the patrons from foreseeable risk and threats. And that was actually some, some, a decision that the Tennessee Supreme Court put down almost two decades ago involving a Walmart in Memphis that had not uh, adequately provided for the security of its patrons knowing that they were in a high crime area. 
So you think these two cases we've had in Chattanooga and the one here in, in Nashville at the movie theater will have a big impact on the gun laws that are proposed and presented in the legislature this next this next session. I think absolutely I was listening to talk radio driving into work this morning and Senator Mark Green from Clarksville who served in the military he's a doctor served as an army ranger I believe uh, he specifically said this morning on the radio he thinks we need to adopt this year constitutional carry and I you know he's got the experience he knows a lot about guns He's not seen as ultra on the right side. You know, he's sort of a moderate on most political issues. And, uh, and there's some who would say that is the exact wrong thing to do in the face of some of these shootings. But, you know, we can, we can talk about that. <laughs> so what do you think? You can give us a call. We have to take a break. 615-737 plus 615-737-7587. We're talking about gun laws in Tennessee and some of the upcoming proposals in the next legislative session. Give us a call. We'll be back right after this.